Good morning, boys and girls. It's good to be back in junior church this morning. Um, we've got some exciting songs to sing this morning, and when we get to singing, I want you to stand up. And a lot of these have some motions, so, you know, be ready. Go ahead and be ready now. Go ahead and get your Bible ready now, too, for Bible lesson. Um, but it's good to be here this morning, and a uh, couple of announcements. First of all, I got my ticket today. And you say, what's this ticket for? I don't know if you can see it, but it's for Greater Vision. And so on August the 1st um, at 6.30 p.m., Greater Vision will be in concert here at Fellowship Baptist Church. And so ask your parents if you're coming. And if you are, tell your parents they need to go, come by the office and get a ticket. There's only a limited amount of space, so, uh, so that'll be exciting. So if you haven't got your ticket yet, go ahead and, and check on that. And then remember, we have three simple rules here in junior church. Rule number one is no talking out. Rule number two, hands to yourself. And rule number three is pay attention, all right? So pay attention, especially when we're singing this morning. Pay attention. All right, let's get straight into our prayer requests. We have the same five prayer requests we've had every week. And we're going to continue with these five prayer requests. We'll, we're going to continue forever with them. We'll put them on our prayer board. They'll be the top of each category. But we're going to continue these five prayer requests as long as we're still doing junior church videos. So number one is pray for your parents. Just pray that God would uh, direct them, direct their paths. Pray that God would help them. And uh, especially in these difficult times, you, you know, your parents really need prayers, and you can pray for them. And then two, pray for our pastor. Pray that God would help him. You know, the decisions about services and, and when to start junior church back and things like that. You know, we've got to do it in the timing order and... Uh, and the pastor's follow, following the lead of, the, of God on this. So just, uh, just pray for your pastor. And uh, these last few weeks, you've got to, or months really now, you've got to sit in and, and actually listen to some of his services. So, so that's good. So just pray for our pastor. And then pray for our president. Um, pray that God would use him and that God would guide him. And the same thing for our governor. Pray for our governor. I pray that God would, would use our governor and that our governor would make good decisions. And then pray for our nation. Our nation is um, really in need of prayer right now, so pray for the United States of America. Matter of fact, here in just a little bit, we're gonna do our pledges this morning. We haven't done them the whole video time we've been videoing. We've not done the pledges, so we're gonna have those here in just a little bit too. But pray for our nation. And if you have any prayer requests you want us to know about, let us know, and uh, we'll pray for them. And then our memory verse, is Second Chronicles 7.14. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. Lord, I pray for the ladies as they come and sing here in a moment. Lord, I pray that you would be with them. I thank you, Lord, for them taking time out of their schedule to come and sing and minister to our children. Lord, I pray for our special speaker we have this morning. I pray, Lord, that uh, you would be with him, calm his nerves, help him, Lord, give him the strength, help him to remember and recall what he studied. Lord, we just thank you for being so good to us. I thank you for our church. I thank you for my church family. I thank you for all the boys and girls that come to our church here, Lord. And, and I'm excited, Lord for the things to come. Lord, I pray that you would be with them. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Okay, so now we're gonna have them come forward and we're gonna do our pledges. So if you're at home, which you are, because you're not here, stand up. So make sure you're standing up, boys and girls, and we're gonna start with the American flag. Right hand over your heart and let's begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. To the Christian flag. Ready? Salute. Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands, 
one Savior, crucified, risen, and coming again with life and liberty to all who believe. Then to the Bible. Ready? Salute. Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I will hide its words in my heart that I might not sin against God. All right, boys and girls. Well, the first song that we're going to sing this morning is How Great Is Our God when we get there.
woman is Jonah. for that um, you know I was sitting there listening while they were singing and I was sitting there thinking if the Lord doesn't return soon and these young ladies and these young men that's helped me out <clears throat> when they grow up whatever God has for them whatever ministry they're serving in they're going to be able to look back and talk about these times they're going to be able to talk about how they ministered to boys and girls during the coronavirus. During when everything was shut down and people couldn't leave their houses, they're going to be able to say that by the grace of God, they were able to stand and sing and minister to, minister to boys and girls. They'll tell their kids this. They'll tell their grandkids this. You ever think about your grandparents or your parents and they tell you this story about back when they were young and, and they'll be able to share this. And, um, you know, we'll eventually be on the other side of this. Eventually, the coronavirus will be gone, and we'll be back to church, and we'll be on the other side of this, and we'll all be able to look back, and we'll all be able to say what God's brought us through. But these, peop these, these young boys and girls and young men and women will be able to tell how God has blessed them and how they were used of God during this time. And so I'm just so thankful for them. More than anything that we've done in this junior church, I'm so thankful that they came out and were able to help. Now, every once in a while, I'll bring a special speaker into junior church. But maybe we'll have a missionary come through or, or something like that, and, and we'll have a special speaker. And so we've got that for you today. Now, this special speaker, I kind of favor a little more than some of the other ones, not because the other ones weren't didn't do a good job or anything like that, but this special speaker is of my own flesh and blood. My son Isaac's going to come up this morning and he's going to share a message with you. Now y'all pray for him. You know, he, he's nervous. He asked me how I do this. He says, Dad, how do you get up and do that and you don't show your nerves? I'm nervous too. Every week that I stand before you boys and girls, whether you're here or whether it's been these videos, I'm nervous. But as soon as I start reading God's Word and I start getting into the message, there's a peace that comes over me. And so you pray for Isaac. You know, he's not taught a junior church lesson, and, and now he's stepping out on, on this big stage and doing it. So you pray for Isaac as he comes. Um, I'm thankful, son, that, that you're coming forward. And so y'all pray for him. I hope you enjoy the message. Well, boys and girls, today you probably already know what I'm going to be teaching on if you can see my props here 
or you know the s song we just sang right before my message, yes, you're right. I'm going to be teaching on Jonah. Now, when you think of Jonah, you probably think of a bedtime story or something you learned when, in Sunday school when you were a little kid. And yes, this may be true. And sometimes, you know, I think of like the whale that swallowed Jonah. And um, so you think of those things. But if you sit up and listen, boys and girls, I'm sure that you can learn something new in this well of a lesson. Well, that reminds me of something. One more thing. If any time in this message you hear me say the word well, I want you to stand up and turn around. Let's practice. Well. Good job, boys and girls. Now, before I start my message, let's pray. Dear, kind, and most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you, Lord, for this day, Lord. I pray you'd help me, Lord, as I give this message, Lord, that if there's a boy or girl out there who don't know you as their Savior, Lord, that they would accept you, Lord. I pray that you would help me and use me, Lord, in this message, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you'd help the boys to sit up, boys and girls to sit up and listen, Lord. And I, Lord, I thank you for all you've done and are going to do, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So first off, boys and girls, we see Jonah's. Number one, we see Jonah's task. I'm going to read here in Jonah chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of uh, Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. So first we see Jonah's task. And in Jonah's task, we see that his task was simple. The Bible says, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and preach. So the task was simple for Jonah. He was supposed to go and preach to Nineveh. But not only, boys and girls, was Jonah's task simple, it was special. Of all the people that God could have chosen the whole world, he chose Jonah. And he has chosen you for something special. But will you be willing to do it? So we see that Jonah's task was simple, special, but it was saving. God was giving Nineveh, this wicked city, a chance to accept him as their savior. And they were going to be destroyed, but God was giving them a chance. Aren't you glad God's merciful? I am. But not only do we see that Jonah's task was simple, special, saving, it was also, boys and girls, it was sacrificial. Jonah was going to have to go out of his comfort zone to a people that he didn't really like and tell them about salvation and the Savior that could save them. Well, let me give you an example. Would you go to your school bully? Would you go to the one always picking on you, always getting you into trouble? Would you go to him or whoever it is and uh, ask and tell him about salvation, knowing that if he did accept his sins against you and against everyone else would be forgiven, that might be a hard task, boys and girls. So we see that Jonah's task was simple, go to Nineveh. It was special of all the people in the world. He was chosen by God, especially. We see that it was saving, boys and girls, because God was giving Nineveh a chance to get saved, and it was sacrificial. Jonah would have to go out of his comfort zone. But next, boys and girls, we see Jonah's travel. Well, Jonah did not want to listen to God, so he fled from his presence. He went down to Joppa. I'm going to read here in verse 3. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa, and he found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare thereof and went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. So, boys and girls, Jonah was traveling, and he was traveling away from God. Tarshish, boys and girls, is in the exact opposite direction of where God had told him to go to Nineveh. So he was fleeing as far away from the Lord as he could. And when you flee from the presence of God, that's not good, boys and girls. You cannot outrun God either, boys and girls, because God is everywhere. It says he's omnipresent. So then we see, we see Jonah's task. We see Jonah's travel. Then thirdly, we see Jonah's tire. He was so tired from running from God that he fell asleep in the bottom of the ship. Have you ever tried to hide something from your parents? Like a chore that you said you did, but you actually didn't do it? Or you said you picked up your toys in your room and all you did was shove them under the bed or stuff them up in the closet? Well, sometimes, boys and girls, it is more exhausting to try to hide a sin than to do what you were supposed to do in the first place. I have an example of a huge storm 
last week, when my family was sitting in our in our in the family room, we heard all of a sudden there was thunder and lightning broke out, and it was super loud. And then we heard some hard rain, almost sounded like hell. But and you know, boys and girls, Mrs. Branson was so scared that she jumped on my lap. <laughs> no, I'm just teasing. It was actually Mr. Branson. One thing, though, I know wasn't happening was none of us were falling asleep because the thunder and lightning was way too loud. Well, boys and girls, God sends a storm or trial in our life, and we don't listen, just like Jonah couldn't hear the storm in, 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 when he was on the ship. And God will knock at the door, and he'll knock again. And if we don't answer, boys and girls, he'll eventually go away, and we can't use him. For example, have you ever gone on visitation? If you have, you've probably come up to a door and knocked. And then no one answered, so you thought, I'll knock again. And you keep knocking, but then no one comes. And then you walk away because no one answered the door. And if we don't answer the door, boys and girls, God will quit knocking. So not only do we see Jonah's tire, fourthly, we see Jonah's trouble. He was finally caught. The lot was cast against him. It says here in verse 7, And they said, Everyone to his fellow, Come, let us cast lots, that we may know for whose cause this evil is upon us. So they cast the lot, and the lot fell upon Jonah. Then said they unto him, Tell us, we pray thee, for whose cause this evil is upon us. What is thy thine occupation? And whence comest thou? What is thy country? And of what people art thou? You see, boys and girls, the lot was cast against Jonah, which meant that he was responsible for this storm. And you see here in verse 8, it says that the sailors asked him where he was from. Boys and girls, Jonah was fleeing from the presence of God, and he was so far away from God, he hadn't even told these sailors about the Savior, the one who could save them from their sins. Boys and girls. And then he said for, in order for the sea to go calm, they would have to throw him overboard. Now the sailors, they didn't want to have to throw him overboard, so they tried to steer the ship back, but they just couldn't. The wave was... The, the wind and the stuff was too much. The storm was too big. Well, boys and girls, we have a big God. So the sailors finally decide to throw him overboard. Well, boys and girls, after we see Jonah's trouble, then we see Jonah's testimony. Well, when the sailors, well, when the sailors threw him overboard, the moment he hit the water, the sea went calm. God used Jonah's disobedience to witness to these sailors. Now, boys and girls, it's never right to sin, but God can, will use anything to get his word to people. So God used his disobedience to witness to these sailors, and it says in the Bible that the sailors feared the Lord and gave sacrifices unto him. So, boys and girls, we see first we see Jonah's tr task, and then we see Jonah's... <coughs> after we see Jonah... Then we see Jonah's... We see Jonah's travel, then we see Jonah's tire, then we see Jonah's trouble, then we see his testimony, and then, sixthly, boys and girls, we see Jonah's timeout. Well, next, God prepared a well to swallow Jonah. The Bible never, I've always wondered, because the Bible never actually says, Pastor calls this your sanctified imagination. I always wondered how long it took the well to swallow Jonah. It never says. I thought, I wonder if Jonah was in, in the water for days before the well came. Or I wonder if it was just hours or minutes or seconds. I've always wondered. I guess it don't really matter because he got swallowed. But you see, boys and girls, God could not wait on Jonah to go to Nineveh. He had to get him there himself. It took a well to get Jonah there. Just imagine if, God, if Jonah would have obeyed from the beginning. He could have saved himself some trouble. And you know what another sad thought is, boys and girls? He was told to go to Nineveh. And that time that it took him to go to Nineveh because he wouldn't do it immediately, just imagine how many people died and went to hell because Jonah didn't obey. Well, God couldn't wait on Jonah anymore. He had to get him there. So he sent a well to get Jonah there. So then after we see Jonah's, um, we see that we see Jonah's time out, we see, seventhly, Jonah's triumph. Finally, Jonah decided to go to Nineveh. He took the long way around the barn. He took the long path. He, okay, I think you get the point. But even though it took a well, a storm, and much more, Jonah finally came back to God. 
Then Jonah finally reached Nineveh and preached the gospel. After hearing the words of God from the mouth of Jonah, the whole city of Nineveh repented. God saw that Nineveh was truly sorry, and he and he would not and he no longer decided to destroy the whole city. This is great news, right? Well, then we see eighthly and finally, boys and girls. Sadly, we see Jonah's temper tantrum. You all know what a temper tantrum is, right? When you, it's like when you throw a fit because you didn't get your way. Well, that's exactly what Jonah did when God spared Nineveh. Jonah didn't want to see Nineveh, his enemy, to su he wanted them to suffer for their sins. The devil wants me and you, boys and girls, to suffer the punishment for our sins. But Jesus died and took our punishment on the cross. Jonah, then we see that Jonah left the city, and he was pouting to, pouting to God. And it was so hot outside the city that God created a gourd for shade for Jonah. And Jonah loved this gourd, and it was comforting because it gave him shade. Um, that night, though, God sent a worm to eat that gourd. And when Jonah woke up the next day and saw that the gourd was dead, Jonah threw yet another temper tantrum. God gave, then we see that God gave Jonah a great object lesson. He asked Jonah why he had pity and why he was bitter at God for killing this gourd. That he didn't even plant, that Jonah didn't even plant or water or nourish for it to grow. But then he was mad for not destroying Nineveh. The, and God goes, why would you do that? My own creation that I created, Nineveh, was, was in sin. And they asked for forgiveness, and I saved them. Is that not great? And just imagine, boys and girls, if Jonah wouldn't have been bitter and had the right attitude and gone to Nineveh in the first place, how much longer the book of Jonah would have been? It's only four chapters long. You can read it in one sit down. But if Jonah had obeyed God, not only could the city of Nineveh have been saved, the whole entire nation could have been saved. Imagine how much more God could have done with Jonah and how much longer this book could have been. It could have been one of the longest books in the Bible. And I'm sure you're wondering, so this is a good story, Isaac, but what do you, what's your point? I'm saying, if you're a Christian, don't stray away from God. God can use failures, but he can't use quitters. Don't quit on God, because God cannot use you if you quit on him. And if you're not saved, you are just like Nineveh. You will be destroyed, because sin must be punished. And the punishment of sin is death, in, the place of, in, the, in, the, in a place the Bible calls hell forever. But God didn't want us to go to hell, so he sent his son, Jesus, who is the only person who's never sinned. Imagine that, boys and girls. He never told a lie. He never tried to hide anything from his parents. He never stole. Have you ever done that? Done anything that you know deep down wasn't right? Well, if you have, you're a sinner, and you can't go to heaven. But Jesus, the perfect sacrifice, died on the cross for my sins and your sins. And that's not all. Three short days later, he arose from the dead and is alive forevermore. All you have to do is admit that you're a sinner, believe that Jesus can save you, and you shall go to heaven forever. I've always heard it this way. All you have to do, admit, believe, and forever receive. Let's pray. Dear kind and most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you, Lord, for giving me this message, Lord, and showing me what I should teach, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for this story of Jonah, Lord, and the Lord, I just pray that you'd be with any boys and girls if they're not saved, Lord that they would be saved, that they would ask their parents, Lord, about salvation, Lord, and that they could be saved. And if there's boys and girls that are saved, Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would just help them not to stray away from you, Lord, and that they, if they have already, Lord, that they could come back to you so you could use them forever. Thank you, Lord, and thank you most of all for sending your son Jesus, who died on the cross for our sins. And it's in his name I do pray. Amen. See you, boys and girls.